Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about switching stances. I'm gonna give you from a kickboxing and MMA perspective, how to switch your stance so your opponent can't see it and lets you land those big shots and get those knockouts. Today's episode, I'm gonna give you five different ways that you can switch stances in kickboxing and MMA. And the importance of switching stances can happen as closing distance, or I can switch stance to create distance, depending on the fight. If I'm a pressure fighter, I'm gonna use my shifts, my closing my distance, the stepping forward to close my distance to be able to land the shots. A lot of times when you throw a big punch or a big kick, your opponent just steps right out of range. This is where you can set those up, shift your stance, close your distance, get to your opposite stance, and throw your attacks. But the other thing you need to remember is a back step as well. If your opponent is a pressure fighter, by back stepping into your opposite stance, it gives you that little bit of space to breathe and at that point you can move or counter or create a strategy based on that. But you need to remember stance switching is a more complex, a more advanced application when it comes to martial arts. You have to be able to be proficient in your opposite stance. So if I'm an orthodox fighter, you usually train and always stand in orthodox stance but practicing southpaw once in a while allows you to get these stance switches. Fighting is imperfect, so a lot of times in your fight, you'll end up in that opposite stance. So at that time, when you throw a combination from that opposite stance, sometimes you get knockouts and great results. But you don't wanna end up there by chance. This video is about putting yourself in your opposite stance to be able to set up your strikes and get those big knockouts. So let's start with my favorite one, and that's set up with the rear straight. And you're gonna see this one a lot in boxing. So a lot of times you use your jab, you set up, and you look for that rear punch. And a lot of times if you're fighting someone who's really good, they're just gonna step out of range with that rear hand. So this is where the shift comes in. I use my jab, when I throw my right hand now, I step with that. So I switch my feet with my right hand, and now I'm in a southpaw position. Now, from that southpaw position, right away, I can drop that left hand. I like an overhand, that thumb down shot that I just taught you guys a few episodes ago. Or, what I like to do is jab again, then throw my rear straight. So, jab, jab, shift off with my rear hand, end up in my southpaw, and find a setup to land my rear hand, or a good combination, usually punch to kick at that time. So, that is shifting using my rear straight to set it up. The second one is kickboxing and MMA based. And we're gonna use a front kick to set it up, specifically the rear front kick. And for those who are good in Muay Thai, you'll see this a lot more because the front kick is really good at being a defensive weapon, a strike to keep your opponent at range. Whether it's a push kick, front kick, it's good to keep your opponent away. Now, when you throw a front kick, a lot of times you push your opponent back or you get a reaction from your opponent where they really freeze up. And because the front kick's a really long weapon, I can use that step to come forward. So now I drive my knee up, just like I'm throwing a front kick, and it lets me step into my opposite stance. Now, the best technique off of the front kick to the stance switch is finding that rear straight punch. It just flows so perfectly, and it comes with a lot of power and a lot of good technique. So rear front kick, come back, usually get that front kick to step forward, and then I find my rear straight off of that. Just like the first setup with the shifting punch, as soon as you get in that, you land that first shot, which is the rear straight, and then that's when you wanna unload combinations. And usually, if you're very good at your opposite stance, especially defensively, you can stay in your opposite stance. If not, come back, move around, get back into your orthodox or your dominant position, block, and then keep the fight going. Okay, so a lot of times these setups are only to get into that position for a moment, and then you go back to your dominant stance. Again, depending on how good defensively you are on your opposite stance. The third setup is gonna be with our round kicks. And a round kick, similar to our front kicks, is a nice round motion that usually has to push off the ground and launches you forward. So, with good round kicks, especially to the body, you get a good shell reaction from your opponent. They sit, they want to block the kick, and this way you can use that almost kick feint to st switch stances. That's if they stay in position. But if your opponent moves from your round kick, 
they evade, you switch your stance with the round kick. Instead of kick and return, what I like to do for faster combinations, you're gonna kick, follow right through, and end in your opposite stance. So it depends what your opponent is doing. If your opponent is standing his ground, you can throw a round kick to the body and then almost a knee up feint to get to your opposite stance and then create an attack. Or what I can do is if my opponent moves, throw that big power kick, fall into my southpaw and then create an attack from there. Again, the left straight, maybe a left kick that way. Depending on your style, you can mix up any strike you want after that position. The fourth way to set up your stand switch in a safe way is going to be about fainting. And I just mentioned that with the round kick that you can bring your knee up, get your opponent to react. So fainting is really set up with good striking. If I throw nice hard rear straight punches, that's gonna let me faint because my opponent is worried about that power punch. So by landing a few good right punches, I could use a feint to get and set up my stance switching. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the punch, but the feint can get a reaction from my opponent, which lets me safe, safely switch my stance, right? If I just switch my stance and my opponent is waiting to counter, that's just a dangerous position to be in because he's ready to catch me as I come in. So using that feint gets my opponent's hands to react, lets me switch stance safely, and then I can attack from there. The same thing with the legs, whether it's a front kick or a round kick, by creating different feints in my leg, lets my opponent react, which lets me close distance. And it also lets me see what their punch tendencies are. If I'm fainting and I see my opponent try to load up for a punch, I know the punch is coming and I can set up my footwork accordingly to avoid the shot. Same thing with the kick. Is he blocking? Is it moving? Is he trying to counter in certain ways? So feints let me kind of see what my opponent wants to do and lets me react. And again, to be able to attack, and to evade safely without getting hit. Now, the most important of the five, and I'm happy you waited to the last moment to watch it, and that comes down from our footwork. So, by having good footwork, it lets you switch your stance when you want to switch your stance. And I'm a big believer from the very beginning of my channel in what is called the triangle step. I need to be able to move my feet laterally in a safe position and then when it's time to attack, I either step in southpaw or I step in orthodox. But stepping from that base position, from that neutral stance, really confuses my opponent which stance I'm gonna step in. So by setting up good combinations and always confusing my opponent, I'm keeping them guessing. So using that neutral stance in that triangle and then stepping in from self ball or stepping in as orthodox, you're just gonna confuse your opponent and get better results when trying to land. Now, it's also important when I'm tracking my opponent against the cage or the ring. So when I'm following them, I wanna walk them into my strikes. And depending on the stance, I could really block them off. So if my opponent is circling one way, I can catch them this way. I might go southpaw. As they're circling the other way, I might come in at orthodox. I'm switching my stances according to lateral tracking. And in the beginning of the video, I also mentioned back stepping where you're not always gonna be the pressure fighter in your fights, or you might have to adapt. So sometimes you're gonna be the one trying to stay long, trying to use your counters. So this is where backstepping comes in. As my opponent pressures, I backstep to a different position, my opposite stance, create more space defensively, and I have more room to one, see where I want to attack, and evade the big shots from my opponent. So just remember, switching stances is a more complicated aspect when it comes to martial arts. And it's really important to set it up properly and to be proficient in your other stance. So start by practicing basic combinations on the opposite stance and then practice these transitions. I'm sure most of us has started our traditional martial arts from one stance only. Right, mix it in a little bit, but as you get more advanced, this is where I want you to play with more advanced application. Practice from your opposite stance. And as you see, in a lot of mixed martial arts and boxing and kickboxing, we're starting to see fighters be more proficient and more advanced in both of their stances, offensively as well as defensively. So if you like these videos, make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA, and make sure you check out HayabusaFight.com and their T3 boxing gloves as their wrist and knuckle protection are my favorite on the market. So keep liking and subscribing, and we're gonna see you next week here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.